This is Andy Shapers with Acuity. Today we're going to continue with part two of our MRL webinar series. And today we're main, mainly going to discuss the use of vendor catalogs in MRL. You're looking at my Team Center client here on the screen. I'm already logged in as an administrator because we want to perform an administrative task where we make a tool from a vendor catalog available to users of MRL. And here's why we'd want to do that. As we look at our catalogs, you'll see that we have two catalogs in this particular implementation, just ISCAR and Kenametal. Well, we could add a few more like Sandvik, and we could potentially have access to thousands and thousands of tools. However, we may just have hundreds of tools available in our tool crib. We do not want people creating tools from components that we don't actually want to purchase. So when we start looking at the, the vendor tool catalogs, then we have a number of problems to solve. As we just mentioned, we don't want the users of tools to have access to components that we don't purchase. In addition, the tool uh, vendors themselves may have their own way of organizing tools, which isn't kiss consistent with the way we want to organize them in our shops. There may be other problems, so they've got their own part numbers that they've assigned to tools. Well, we may have our own part numbering system that we want to use for all of our tools, independent of what manufacturer they came from. We need a way to deal with all of these problems. And so that's why we're here in the uh, classification as an administrator, because we are going to map a tool from a catalog into our MRL implementation down here and make it available for users of MRL. So let's start here in Kenametal, and there's a particular insert that we want to select. Let's say square insert. So I'll search and locate it here in the table. All right, let's double click to select that. And what I'm looking at now then is all of the data that Kenametal supplies with this insert. Now, this is the part where I'm going to map it though into my system. So here I get to assign a name and I'll call this TMT square. And I'm going to say I want to copy the data sets and also I want to import the catalog 3D model. As I go through this then, in the background, all of this information is part of a DIN standard, which the tool manufacturers have agreed to follow. And that's what allows this to work. The catalog data is a step file and all the, the uh, parameters that you see here are being assigned using a DIN standard and the classification for the tool itself is also a DIN standard. Let's click OK and we'll watch down below as it maps this tool into my catalog. Now it's importing the step file and converting it into an NX file or uh, you know, a file that MRL can understand. And now on the screen, you'll see that we've jumped down. We're no longer up in the vendor catalog area. We're now down in my tool components that I use in my company. So I've essentially then just added this square insert to my tool crib and made it available. If I look over here, you see that it did successfully translate that 3D step file. And so that is now going to be used as a component in MRL. And the other thing that you'll see is that I've got the parameters that came from Kenametal are now assigned to my tool, which I'm calling in this case, tool 57. If we look a little farther down though, you'll see that there's something that we didn't do last week with the, the tools we uh, made ourselves. And that is there's something called connection data an inter insert interface code. This is part of what in MRL we call the guided component search. And it's useful in a situation where you have selected an insert and now you want to find a face mill body to attach it to. 
well, if I have a square insert, I don't want to look at bodies that are meant for round inserts, and this connection code is what prevents that from happening. It understands the shape and size of the insert and the mounting style, and it's looking for matches to maintain consistency for our tool assemblies, and it makes the, the searches go a lot faster. All right, let's go back and try this one more time and sort of add another level of complexity here. So we're back at the vendor catalogs again. And this time I'll go into the adaptive items and I'm going to look at uh, steep taper, taper shanks. Okay, let's do our search. And I'll select this one. Once again, I'll map the classification, but this time I get a different dialog box. It's asking me, well, there are multiple target classes, so I need to make a decision. And what MRL is saying is that based on the type of holder this is, this Arbor uh, matches uh, a particular DIN standard classification, and on my side of things, I have several places where this could go. So for a particular type of holder, I might have defined a class that's you know, for high-speed machining or something else just for a particular machine tool, whatever made sense for my shop. So now I have an option of deciding, well, which class did I actually want to put that in? And in this case, I'll choose the uh, Arbor Familiar Tools. And this part's familiar. And once again, we do want to import that 3D catalog model. So we'll give it just a second here to uh, create that tool using the model and the parameter data from Kenamodel. Okay, it's complete. And here is the, the model that it has downloaded from the step file and then created that tool on the MRL side, and here we are looking at our classification for our tool crib, and it's been added to this particular class. Now, let's take this tool and send it to my team center. And we've just got a, a slightly different view of this tool. So uh, because it's mapped, you see that I have my own object in Team Center, which I'm calling 058 in this case. It even has a revision. This is Rev A of this tool. However, I have not lost the connection back to the original Kenametal tool. If I go to the Summary tab, you'll see there's still lots of information about where this came from, from the Kenametal side. Here is the vendor reference class ID. Again, this is part of the DIN standard. But this is how Kenametal organizes this into a class. Then here's their reference object ID. Again, this is from the DIN side of things. This is a unique identifier for Kenametal. But if I come up here, this is what my purchasing agent is going to use to actually order this tool and make it available in the tool crib. This then, this technique of mapping is what allows us ready access to parameters and geometric data and models from the tool manufacturers, yet at the same time allows us to implement our own policies for how we want to organize and work with our tools. Next, let's look at a, a different part of the resource manager. So I'm going to go back to classification again. And this is something you might have seen as you've, uh, we've gone through these uh, two webinars, but we haven't really talked about yet. And that is that while MRL can create and manage the tools, we also manage some of the peripheral information associated with the use of tools, in this case, the machining data library. We've had a machining data library in NX Native for many years, and so you may be familiar with some of these terms here. 
essentially what we've done is allowed you to take the way you use that library now in NX and without having to train your users to do anything different, you can now manage those feeds and speeds inside MRL, inside Team Center. So let's look at uh, one of these machining data types right here where uh, if I go to the table, you'll see there are you know, loaded with the software many different uh, over 1,500 uh, parameter sets for different tool materials, part materials, cut method types. This results in an object ID, and if we find a match for these three things, uh, it will then associate uh, surface cutting speeds to that operation type. Now, another thing we can do is tool machine and data I don't have as much data here. I've only got a couple of examples. But here is the flexibility to assign to a specific tool a depth of cut, step over, and then surface speeds, as you see here. What's interesting about this and what adds additional flexibility to the machining data library in MRL is that you can have multiple uh, entries for a specific tool. What would make those entries different is anything really depending on your shop policy. For instance, I might have three entries for a specific tool based on different machine tools and I'm going to have different depths of cut or feeds and speeds based on which machine that tool was mounted in. We can then write the logic so that when your programmers have selected a machine and a tool. When they do set machining data, it's invisible to them, but MRL in the background is selecting the correct set of fees and speeds, not only for that tool, but that tool in that machine tool. So that's a, a quick overview then of some of the other capabilities of MRL. We went through the use of the vendor catalogs, a very powerful part of our ability to source and create tools. And then we talked about the machining data library. Thank you uh, for your time today. Uh, if you have any additional questions about MRL or anything else, please contact us here at Acuity.